On a scale from 1 to 10, how stressed are you right now? In your opinion, did you get enough sleep last night? Are you taking any medication currently? Balancing work and your life at home is a daily fight and sometimes causes struggle. Do you feel fatigued by all the demands put on you? You were partying late last night. Are you sure that there is no alcohol in your blood? These questions have much to do with your ability to work safely in aviation. Today, I'll discuss stress and fatigue, what they are, how to evade them, and what psychoactive substances can be used while working in aviation. What exactly is stress? Stress is our body's way of responding to any demand or threat. When you feel threatened, your nervous system releases stress hormones like adrenaline and cortisol, preparing you for emergency action. This is the fight or flight response, your body's alarm system kicking into gear. Acute versus chronic stress. Stress isn't all bad either. We have acute stress and chronic stress. Acute stress is short term and can even be thrilling in small doses like when you're preparing for an exam, about to land a plane under challenging conditions or controlling air traffic when there's thunderstorms all over the place. It sharpens your concentration and can actually help your performance. Chronic stress, however, is long term and can harm your health. It's like running your car engine non-stop without maintenance. Eventually it will wear out. Where does stress come from? Pretty much everywhere. Sources of stress can be internal, like worrying about your yearly competency check tomorrow, or external, like dealing with a demanding boss. In aviation, stressors include bad weather, tight schedules, or especially in ATC, complex or non-routine traffic situations. For my fellow aviation guys, work-related stressors are a big deal. They include night shifts, irregular schedules, and the high-stakes environment of ensuring safety. There's also the pressure of making quick decisions in critical situations. It is so easy to notice the stress levels increasing when something out of ordinary starts to happen. Signs of stress in the individual. So how do you know if you're stressed? We have a checkbook to go through. All of us experience stress in a different way. Usually the signs can be either physiological, psychological, and behavioral. For example, physiological signs include headaches, muscle tension, fatigue, sleep disturbances, and gastrointestinal issues. You might also experience an increased heart rate or sweaty palms. Psychological signs are these wonderful things that are caused by stress, anxiety, irritability, depression, and difficulty concentrating. You might feel overwhelmed or have a constant sense of worry. Have you noticed any changes in your behavior? For example, withdrawing from social activities, increased use of alcohol or drugs, changes in eating habits, or neglecting responsibilities. These are behavioral signs. Not all stress is created equal and the negative experiences of stress can take a toll. Chronic stress can lead to serious health problems like heart disease, hypertension, diabetes, and mental health disorders. In aviation, it can impair your judgment, slow your reaction times, and reduce your overall performance, none of which are ideal when you're responsible for the safety of hundreds of passengers. Mitigation of stress. But how do we manage stress in such a stressful environment? A lot of the responsibility falls on us, the individuals. Exercise, quality sleep, mindfulness, and relaxation techniques like meditation, deep breathing, and yoga. Most ATC fellas opt for some sort of physical workout, a balanced healthy diet, limiting alcohol, and avoiding smoking. Whether in aviation or not, don't be afraid to talk to friends, family, or a professional about what you're going through. Now what does the employer do for us? Most companies create a supportive and positive work environment. They ensure that workloads are manageable and allow adequate rest periods. Stress management training is mandatory where I work. This is the reason I'm highly educated on the topic. Every ATC unit has to have a system in place for critical incident stress management. There are people trained to have a chat with you in case of an incident or an accident you have been involved in. Why not grab these people when you feel that you need someone to talk to about anything that's bothering you at work? What is fatigue? Fatigue is a huge topic and it's not about feeling sleepy. It's a state of physical and mental weariness caused by long periods of exertion or lack of sleep. In aviation, fatigue is a critical factor that can impair the ability to perform essential tasks. It can lead to slower reaction times, reduced vigilance and impaired decision making, which are all crucial for the safety of air traffic control operations. Symptoms of fatigue can be physical, like persistent tiredness, muscle aches, headaches and digestive issues. They can also be mental, like difficulty concentrating, memory problems, and impaired judgment. Finally, they can be emotional, like mood swings, irritability, and decreased motivation. 
If you're experiencing these symptoms, it's a clear sign that your body and mind need rest. What exactly causes fatigue? Well, let me break the shocking truth. Only very small part of it is your job, and most of it are your lifestyle choices. Your choices significantly impact your energy levels. Here are some common lifestyle-related causes. Lack of sleep, poor diet, and lack of exercise are significant contributors to stress and fatigue. When we don't get enough sleep, our bodies miss out on critical restorative processes that occur during deep sleep, leading to impaired cognitive function, reduced alertness, and increased stress levels. Poor diet, particularly one high in processed foods and low in essential nutrients, fails to provide the body with the necessary fuel and vitamins needed for optimal energy production, leading to feelings of tiredness and sluggishness. Additionally, a lack of regular physical exercise can result in poor blood circulation, decreased muscle strength, and lower endorphin levels, all of which contribute to increased stress and a pervasive sense of fatigue. Together, these factors create a cycle of stress and exhaustion, making it challenging to maintain high levels of performance and well-being. Treat fatigue like you treat stress with proper sleep, a healthy diet, and regular exercise. Psychoactive substances, how do they affect us? First of all, any chemical that messes with your central nervous system and changes how your brain works is considered a psychoactive substance. The magic road of substances can lead to all sorts of effects, from feeling super alert and energetic, to totally relaxed or even seeing things that aren't there. These substances are grouped based on what they do to your brain and body. One, stimulants are your get up and go substances. They amp up brain activity, making you feel more awake and alert. Think caffeine, hello coffee lovers, nicotine, cocoa powder, and Addies. Two, depressants mellow you out. They calm the brain, ease anxiety, and can make you sleepy. Alcohol, barbiturates, and benzodiazepines fall into this category. Three, anxiolytics are the chill pills that zap anxiety. These are Valium, some antidepressants, and even some opioids. Four, euphorians give you that happy, euphoric feeling. Molly, some opioids and even a good dose of alcohol can do this. 5. Hallucinogens make you see, hear, and feel things that aren't there. Acid, magic mushrooms, and mescaline are in this group. 6. Finally, empathogens are love drugs that make you feel super empathetic and connected to others. Molly is a big one here. Medically, these substances are used for pain relief, anesthesia, and treating mental health issues. But there's a flip side. They can also lead to addiction, dependence, and some severe health problems. Psychoactive drugs work by messing with neurotransmitters in your brain. They can either boost the activity of certain neurotransmitters, agonists, or block them, antagonists. For example, GABA is a common neurotransmitter that usually chills things out. Alcohol and benzodiazepines are GABA agonists, so they enhance that calming effect. It is commonly socially acceptable to have a drink or two when you're on your day off. Just keep in mind that it is still a poison in you and your body has to fight to get rid of it. I hate to break it to you, but the polyphenols with the antioxidant properties in your wine glass can also be found in vegetables, berries, and fruits, such as grapes without the fermentation. Air traffic controllers and psychoactive substances. As air traffic controllers, we must watch out double time not to fall into the trap of substances. It's a crazy important job, so no wonder we have a ton of regulation around ensuring we don't use psychoactive substances in a problematic way. Here's how it works. Air traffic control service providers ensure that their employees aren't using these substances in a way that affects their jobs. They have systems in place to test for these substances. Once again, training is key here. We get schooled on the effects of these substances and the responsibilities around us like high school kids. Although the morale concerning substances is extremely high, there are mandatory random testing taking place in both ATC and pilot environments. How about the everyday psychoactive drugs? I haven't covered your morning coffee and that smoke break. Guess what? Both are considered psychoactive. In fact, caffeine found in coffee is the most popular psychoactive substance in the world. It boosts your alertness and concentration. While nicotine in tobacco gives you a quick buzz of energy but can lead to fatigue and addiction over time. These are legal and socially accepted but still mess with your brain chemistry, just like the hard stuff. So. If you're involved in ATC, as a good friend, I recommend you quit smoking and don't chuck down that coffee non-stop at work. Nevertheless, these substances aren't banned in aviation. It doesn't make them worth overdosing. Fit for duty. What does it mean to be fit for duty? 
Every job has its own meaning. If you're a stockbroker, being fit for the duty probably means being on everything to make you energetic for 20 hours straight and kill the hangover. But they are not like us, air traffic controllers. Being fit for duty in ATC means meeting medical fitness requirements, staying alert and well-rested, and avoiding any substances that could affect their performance, as mentioned in, for example, IKO Doc 9966. Why does it matter? I hope at this point it's a no-brainer question for you. We as professionals are responsible for the daily safety of thousands of lives. Air traffic service providers must ensure that their staff is competent, medically fit, and capable of safely performing their tasks. Staying fit for duty. So how do controllers stay fit for duty? Here are the key factors. To stay fit, don't go for extreme Jocko Willink workout schedules. Just make sure anything you do there is regular. This boosts cardiovascular fitness and muscle endurance and also enhances mental well-being and self-esteem. The key to good health is eating a balanced diet with the right mix of protein, carbohydrates, fats, fiber, vitamins, minerals, and water. Fatigue can be physical, like muscle tiredness, or mental, like decreased attention. Make sure both cannot touch you. Any viewer of mine managed to quit caffeine or smoking or alcohol, how does it feel? Let me know in the comment section, guys. I want to meet the real heroes. And if you haven't watched my other Human Factors videos, go check out this one where we dig deeper into what affects our behavior in ATC. See you there.